Hi, everybody. This is Justin with TheActionReport.com. We're joined today by Richard Harris, the uh, cue maker behind Bluegrass Cues and uh, one of the most world-famous cue brands in the world. Richard, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How long have you been making cues? A little over 17 years. Really? How would you get into it? <laughs> well, I wasn't doing anything but uh, playing pool. And a friend of mine had a lathe and a milling machine, and summer was coming on. Pool action slows down a little bit. I was living in Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, he just asked me if I wanted to play around with it. And, uh, I made a pretty good score there in Lexington. So uh -huh. uh, I thought, well, I'll take the summer off and play with these cues. Uh, I started playing around with it. And I don't know, it just kind of fascinated me. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of got hooked into it. Just so like I guess that's pool. where bluegrass comes from, of course. You yeah. started in Lexington? Yeah. Well, I was, uh, as in... I think I lived in Kentucky for five years, uh -huh. and I, when I first started making cues, it, uh, I was in Kentucky, so I had to call him something. So. And you self-taught? Did you have? Did he help you along? Or well, you I, just... uh, I worked with a machinist, a guy named Charlie Rose, mm -hmm. and uh, he helped me for about six months and taught me to use the lathe and milling machine, and the uh, rest of it, I, of course, most of it's mathematics. Okay. And... Uh, when I went to college, calculus was my favorite class. Okay. And uh, I'm just more or less a mathematical nut. Oh, so. Uh, so uh, I figured all the rest, most of it out mathematically. No kidding. Yeah. That's interesting. And as far as the style on your cues, you have a very distinctive style that carries through, as far as I know, and has for a long time. Right. Uh, really emphasizing the beauty of the woods and things like that. Yeah. You like to do that more than the inlays and things like that? Well, I just like the beauty of the wood. I don't stain anything or everything's all natural. Okay. And we were talking earlier about uh, the micarta that you use, especially on some of your older cues with the yellow micarta. Right. Yeah. I got lucky and bought uh, <clears throat> bought a big chunk of uh, yellow micarta. In fact, I think I got it off Dickie Neighbors. Oh, really? Yeah. I bet he wishes he yeah. had that back. <laughs> he probably does. And... Uh, I don't know. Well, to start with, like uh, 17 years ago, I mean, you could still get it. Uh -huh. And uh, so I just started using it. That's what I like best, so I just started using it on every cue I made. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had that back now. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot harder to find even than ivory, huh? But my regular cues that I make today, I got lucky and, and found an old knife maker. Okay. That had uh, a lot of my car to laying around. And he, he uh, I bought it in 1999. And he said he had it for 20 years. So it's good stuff. So <laughs> it's almost 30 years old now. Yeah. It's kind of an ivory color. Now, how many cues a year do you make now? About 40. 40? Yeah. And you no longer take orders, correct? Correct. You have to. Right. So if you want one, you got to buy one on the secondary market. That's a pretty good Get spot. Yeah, i got a handful of dealers that I deal with mm -hmm. that you can contact. Now, do you make... Uh, you have one certain taper, everything that you've come up with on your own yes. as far as the butt taper yeah, and the butt and the shaft. Okay. I only use one taper. How'd you come up with that? Experimented. Yeah. Just what you I liked. Knew, I knew what the hit hit was that I liked and uh years ago I liked McDermott's. Mm -hmm. I I bought a cue that I think he made out in his garage. Okay. And I liked it with a flat face joint and a wood wood hit and uh I mean, his cue played real good. I really liked the way Jim made a cue. Uh -huh. So I was pretty well after that kind of a hit of the old McDermott's. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty well what I was after. So the big pin, flat face. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, you've got a cue with you here today. Can yep. you take a look at that? Yeah, this is the one I play with. And that's Coco Bolo and Bird's Eye. That's yep. beautiful. And you said your wife does the finish work on these, correct? Correct. Yep. And she does the finishing and the wrapping, the leather wraps and the Irish linen wrap. Now, is the leather wrap something I've noticed in the Q world today? It seems like you can't turn around without seeing leather wraps, whereas I remember 15 years ago they were a lot more rare to come across. Right. Well, it kind of helped when they made a machine to help put those leather wraps on. We tried some all oh, 15, 16 years ago to do leather wraps, and it you just it was almost impossible to get the seam right. Okay. And uh, we bought a, I think it was a D'Angelo machine. 
I bought the, Joe Blackburn is the one who told me that, what to get, and uh, he kind of helped me along with it. And uh, after we got one of them machines, and it's still hard to do if you get leather that you want to stretch a little bit, or right. I mean, it's real, real hard to get it dead perfect. Yeah, that, and that's where you know, you, as soon as everyone picks up a leather wrap cue, that's the first thing they look right. at is the scene. Yeah, to see if they can see. Well, it. My wife does fine. that. Of course, the more more of them she does, the better she's getting. Yeah. That's that's a beautiful cue, Richard. That, that really Thank you. is. And this is—I mean—that's your signature style. You like the block rings like yeah. that? Yeah. Now there was a, a thread on AZ. Mike Janice, we were talking about this before. Oh yeah. The uh, was looking for the nugget, one of the nugget cues. Right. What's the story behind that with the with the gold? Well, the first one that I made, a guy in Huntington, West Virginia, wanted me to make it for him. And he come over. He's a friend of mine, Danny Brown. He come over and was discussing this cue, and uh, he had a necklace on and a, and a gold bracelet on. And he took took off the, the gold and hand to and said, I want this in a cue. And that was the <laughs> first one that I'd done. Uh -huh. But now uh, the one, that the gold nugget cue that uh, Mike is looking for is uh, probably about the third or fourth one I'd done. Okay. After, I, after I'd done, done the first one, I'd done it with herringbone. Uh, uh, gold, uh -huh. and all I could do is cut it and put it around. You could see where the gold matches up. Right. So I talked with a jeweler and worked with different different stuff, and uh, they come up with a, a gold nugget where you can take the links apart, and then you, know, you cut out the ring and put the gold in and put it back together, and there, there's no seam. So it's just it looks perfect all the way right. around. Wow. But that is so hard to do. Really? I mean, I just. It's been a good while since I've made one. Okay. Are you going to make any more? I've got uh, a pair to make for a guy next year. I'm okay. going to try to get them done next year. Now, is that how you, you have your production planned out for several years in advance? You know pretty much? Mostly. I've got a handful of dealers that I deal with, and they'll just take anything I make. Mm -hmm. And I promise them, like Jack Lee in Middletown, mm -hmm. I promise them eight cues a year. Okay. Well... Like last year, I think I sold him five or six, <laughs> and this year I've got him, I think, five so far, and I'll probably get him a couple more for the end of the year. Okay. I'm always running behind. Now, when you first started, was it, uh, how did you sell your cues? Was it just people saw them and said, hey, I want that, let me buy that from you? Or? Well, when I first started was, uh, well, a lot of people knew me from playing. Mm -hmm. I played a whole eight or ten years, that's all I've done was play pool. And the last year I'd done it, I was living in Lexington, Kentucky. I moved down there just to play pool, and playing against Brumback and Shannon Dalton and them kind of characters. Yep. <laughs> it's tough action. It was, it, but it was a lot of fun. I loved it. And uh, so a lot of people knew me and knew I played pretty good. And once I started making cues, well, they was interested. Uh -huh. So uh, back in them days, uh, Danny Bally used to run the Lexington All-Star Tournament. I went to like, several of those. At least that. twice a year, I think. Yep, I remember those tournaments. So uh, he let me set up for next to nothing because he knew me too. Uh -huh. And uh, I'd go and set up, and guys would come around and look at them, and, different, different, and they just caught fire. Yep. I mean, I could take in uh, eight or ten cues and set up a table, and... Uh, before the night's over, they're all gone in one night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went to Toledo tournament one time. And uh, I think it was probably 91 or 92 that I went up there. Uh, it might have been 92, 93, somewhere in there. Anyway, I think I took 14 cues up there. I met uh, Tommy Vay, who used to run North Coast Amusements. He had a table, and he let me come up there and set my cues out. And... Uh, I think it was less than two hours, it was all gone. And uh, I took uh, like 15 or 20 orders mm -hmm. just sitting there. Yeah. And had nothing left to show anybody. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I think I went to one more all star tournament. I think I hit three of them all together. And that was after that, I was just covered up. Right. Been that way ever since? Yep, ever since. Now, well, how, about, how many years ago was it that you quit taking orders? Well, I quit uh, for a while. I think from about, uh, man, it's hard to remember. That's mm -hmm. what happens when you get old. <laughs> Let's see. I quit for a while, about four or five years I didn't take any orders, and then I built a, built a new shop. 
Uh -huh. I built a new shop in 2002, been five years ago. And I got the bright idea that I'll get this new shop, I can make more cues. I uh -huh. figured I could pump up to, I wanted to get making at least 50 cues a year. Okay. And I thought, well, I might be able to get 50, 55. Right. So I calculated things out, how many I could sell, and need and everything. I thought, well, I'll take orders off the Internet. Okay. So I posted that I started taking orders. <laughs> I and see where this oh, is going. Oh, man. I mean, they just flooded me. I mean, no time flat. Yeah. Within two or three weeks, I've got, I've got I'm backed up uh, probably 200 emails to answer. Right. And, uh, I, and I'm wasting too much time on emails. Yeah. <laughs> answering people, not, not getting enough work done. Cues, yeah. So I just, I just uh, said, well, the heck with this. I mean, I got plenty of orders, and I've got a few dealers set up. I promise cues, and I've got more cues than I can get done in probably six or eight years. Yeah. And uh, so I just quit taking orders. Oh, it must have been 2002, 2003. Wow. Yeah, That's right. something else. I tell you what, you do I amazing got, work. I got you? no plans taking orders anytime soon. Yeah. So if you want one, either know somebody or check out my <laughs> website <laughs> or, or look used. Uh, Poolcues.net. Okay. Poolcues.net. Yep. And I got a list of dealers on there. Contact them. Okay. And uh, like I say, Jack Lee from Middletown, and he's he's been buying cues off of me almost since I started, because he knew me from the seventies. Okay. I used to go, he, he was running a pool room there in Middletown, and I used to go up there, and there had be a lot of action up there, and yep. I'd go up there and play a lot of guys. And so he, he's known me for 30 years. Now, is it getting harder to find quality wood for cues, the exotics and things, coca bolos? I know ebony, I've heard people say it's not easy to find good ebony anymore for a reasonable price. Well, I... I'm set up with some uh, wood dealers I've dealt with for a good little while, and they know what I want, and they know mm -hmm. how particular I am, and when they get something real good in, they'll give me a call. Okay. Or if I need something, I'll call them and say, yeah, I want something specific, and when you get something double A, triple A stuff in, yeah. call me. Now, is there anything you don't like to work with that you'd Snake work? Snake wood. Snake wood? <laughs> no, a pain in the butt. <laughs> so will you still, do you still work with it when you have to, or do you just... Not even mess with it anymore. Well, I started using a lot of burls, yeah. like Amboina and Thuya burl, uh -huh. and uh, I'd rather use that. Okay. But uh, I think I've got maybe a couple orders with snake wood. But, uh, and what's the issue with the snake wood? I know it's oily and nasty. And well, it's, uh, it's real hard and very unstable. Okay. And you can cut up a piece of it and everything just fine, maybe let it set for a month. It looks perfect. All of a sudden, it... It just cracks. <laughs> After all the work. Yeah, it, it just, and it's just super hard to work with. Okay. So I'd just assume not use it, but it is beautiful. What is that your favorite, the Coca Bolo? Coca Bolo. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two combinations that I really like is the Bird's Eye Coca Bolo and the Ebony and Tulip. I, I'm a big fan of the yeah. Tulip Wood myself. Yeah, I love that. Love that color contrast with the Ebony. That's, uh, and you use just uh, brown phenolic, I know. I'm a big fan of that myself. Yeah. And so you use a lot of that in your cues. Well, phenolic. I used to. There for three or four years, you couldn't get any, only kind of a butterscotch, real light brown. I wouldn't even use it. Mm -hmm. But luckily, I'd bought up some, a good bit of the old stuff. And now yeah. they come up with a new one, I think they call mahogany, that I can get. Which is a darker color. Yeah, phenolic. it's a little bit darker brown. Now, I like it pretty well. And you said that you... Uh, you cut your own pins as well. You manufacture Correct. those. Yep. Just single point them on a lathe. And did you is, did you take a standard design or did you actually? No, I I uh, I, don't know, I messed around with four or five different uh, designs. I was working with that machinist and he came up with a couple designs and I come up with a couple and tried it. I think I made a half a dozen cues with a little different pin in it. And then I come up with this style, and I liked it real well. What's the most elaborate or unusual cue you've made so far? <laughs> Probably that one with the gold in it. The gold, the nuggets. Yeah. Either that or, or they, I think they call it the, uh, a, a, like a Zamboni cue where it's got the square blocks. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I think I saw yeah. pictures of that. The box I've, cue. That, right. I think I've made above. 
four of those, I believe. Four of the box cues? Mm -hmm. Oh, Richard, we thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge with us. All right. And we really appreciate it. And if you want to tell everybody, what was that website again? Mm, www. <laughs> Can't hardly get the W's out. <laughs> Poolcues.net. All right. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Appreciate it.